Let's begin. This is the stock bearing. This is what comes with hot racing. So this is why it was so important. See the size difference here? Let me actually show the camera. See, this is the hot racing. Just a lot bigger, a lot bigger. And you'll be surprised that does make a difference. So I'm putting one bearing there, one bearing here, just a little bit of oil. I don't have a specific oil that I'm using, 
I've used many uh, bearing oils before, so you use whatever bearing oil you wish. I used expensive ones, I used cheap ones. Just make sure we massage, massage the oil into the bearing. Uh, I don't really have a preference, to be honest with you. Uh, this is Sin by Avid, I think. And it's also pretty good. I like it. Our input shaft or differential pinion, whatever you guys want to call it. After the, we make sure the bearings are seated nicely, we'll put it here. We just want to make sure that it sits at the right position. Obviously, this is the set screw that holds. And you want to make sure that it's nicely even and loose enough. So you want to make sure that there's no too much resistance, like you did something wrong. All right, now let's build a locker. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is open your normal differential. Gently. Pry it just like so. Now, what we need is only the ring gear. We don't really need the diff, so you can either keep or sell the differential. And don't forget that the locker comes with bearings, so you don't really need that. Don't forget you need to oil them, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Gently extract our ring gear from what is left from our differential. Very simple, needle nose pliers. You just open it like so. There's a little pin here, so we don't need that. We don't need that, and honestly, we don't even need these little buddies right here. So we're going to remove everything. And obviously these will go aside, keep it for future use. Everything should be pretty clean because soon enough, we're going to work with some Loctite as well. So we want to make sure that our environment is fairly clean. All right, installing the locker is fairly simple, but there are some steps that you want to be mindful of. Here's my way. Uh, you can obviously have your own way. I first just remove everything from it. Now keep in mind that everything that comes with the locker is completely dry. So bearings have to be oiled. Um, all the screws have to be locked tight. Now you can see that there is a little groove here and here. Obviously these are for those drive cups and this is for both set screws. What you want to make sure is you want to make sure that these are aligned. That little groove and those set screws. So what I do, I just bring them inside and I can pick through those holes obviously and I make sure that the groove here is flat and right at the range of where these screws are. And then what I do is I put those screws back into place, no Loctite yet. And I'm not really tightening them too much, but just enough for them to actually grab. After I did, I opened just a tad and just a tad. That shows me now the range of this groove. So I know exactly what the range is, or, or in other words, where I can't or not allowed to pass, because now those set screws are biting just enough so they stay in this groove. And then what I do, we can actually close it just a little bit more. That's it, that's my range. And now I can actually calculate exactly where I want this to sit, keeping in mind that the groove is actually towards those set screws. So I'm gonna put a drive cup here, and obviously that flat spot is going to be towards my set screw. And then I can see here how deep the shaft sits inside that cup, right here. It's kind of hard to show in the camera with the lighting. Let me actually do my best here. You can see how deep it is. And let's just assume that I want it flat. Now the shaft is flat inside the drive cup. Now I'm just going to gently tighten one of them just so I keep my position and then I can actually go to the other side. I can actually simulate me having the ring gear on and a bearing and the other cup. Flat screw to set screw or sorry flat spot to set screw and then I can see how deep the shaft sit inside this drive cup. Let me actually zoom in because I can see that with the lighting it's very hard to tell. Okay, so you see that shaft inside this cup here. So now it's about flat. And what I want to make sure that when everything is tucked in and closed, it's balanced. So the depth of how deep the shaft is here is balanced. And it looks like we have maybe a half a millimeter of difference. So I'm just going to press gently. And now it seems like we're in business. It seems like we have the same about depth in both sides. Once we do, 
I'm going to actually close that a little bit tighter just so I know the position, okay? And then we're gonna go back and put some Loctite. But now I know this is the exact position with the shaft is about centered inside this locker. Cups are all the way in, bearings are in place, ring gear is in place, nothing is fastened yet, but I know that this is about how I want it to look. And now I can actually remove those cups. Let me actually zoom you out just a tad. Remove the cups, remove everything. And now I know that this is the right position for this shaft. And now I can actually apply some Loctite, of course, on this flat spot. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm not going to open both of them because I'm, then I'm obviously losing my position. Red Loctite, super important. I'm going to take only one of them out, ensuring that the other one is in fact close enough. I'm going to take only one of them. Great opportunity to look inside and verify that the flat spot is towards me. Then I'm going to actually apply some red Loctite and I make sure that I apply some red Loctite on the tip of the set screw also because I want this red Loctite to actually reach and almost hit that shaft inside. So I have a nice, well, not pull, but a nice amount of Loctite inside. Once I did, I closed all the way and now is the time that I'm actually tightening it all the way. Now that this one is securing the same position we talked about, now I can open the other one. Obviously we know that we have a flat spot here, Loctite, red Loctite on the side and not to forget, a little bit on the tip. The reason we put it on the tip of the set screw is once again, because we want it to actually penetrate and go inside that cavity here and feel the connection or the joint between the set screw and the locker and the shaft with red Loctite. So everything is held together. And then we're going to fasten it very, very strong. Both of them are now closed. We have red Loctite. The positioning of the shaft is exact. So we can clean it up real quick, nicely. And now we know that the shaft is centered nicely and it's closed. Now, after we did that, of course, we can simply install our ring gear. Let's zoom out just a little bit more. We can install our ring gear just like so. Same dealio, Loctite, very simple. You're gonna use the provided screws that the scorched locker is coming with. With these, you don't have to really go nuts with Loctite and obviously you don't need anything in the tip because the tip will be rather in the air. Just a little bit nice red Loctite here. Close it nicely. Don't tighten it fully all the way. Just put it there so it sits. We're going to use the other one here. A little bit of red Loctite just so we have a little bit in that thread. Just nicely like so. I usually put the opposite screw from where I started and I'm not tightening it all the way simply because I want it to sit evenly even though the machining is unbelievable with those scorched uh, parts, uh, I still want to make sure that everything is even. So when I close it, I torque it evenly, if that makes sense. And we have the last one, sorry about that. I just want to do it in one take, just so you guys can actually get a feel of what I'm doing and in real time, how long that takes. So nothing too crazy. I'm going to close this last one. Look at that machining, this is beautiful effortless great job and now i can tight that all the way the opposite one all the way all the way and all the way so now we know that we have red loctite here red loctite here this is going nowhere that looks great it looks even after we did that we can put a bearing don't forget those bearings need to be oiled not too much, don't go too crazy, but they do definitely need to be oiled. Make sure that you don't let the oil touch the actual shaft of where 
beautiful, where that drive cup is going to hit because we're gonna have red Loctite over there. You want it as dry and as sticky as it gets. So oil the bearing, that's great. If you wanna do it outside of the locker, wonderful, but make sure that this shaft, there's no oil touching that shaft once you're oiling the bearing. That's pretty much it. Now we're gonna take the drive cup. We can remove one of the set screws, red Loctite. A little bit in the tip. Why? Because we wanted to actually the red Loctite to hit that shaft. Then we're going to put that on the cup, just like so. And we're going to find our flat spot. Nice. Live TV, guys. Live TV. Nah, I just want to do it in one shot. Make sure no oil is touching that shaft, like we said. Be mindful always of that. And now we can just tighten it all the way. Tighten it lightly and then we can see from here, again, let me zoom in a little bit just so you guys see what I'm talking about and shed some light on the situation, eh, kind of, yes. Okay, so now we can see that the flat spot is exactly where that set screw is and we're going to close it tightly. Now after you do, make sure you don't leave, sorry about that guys, again, one shot, it is what it is. After we do, make sure that you don't let that red Loctite touch your bearing because what it will do is, well, lock your bearing. So bearing is fine and oiled, Loctite is here, everything sits nicely and even. I'm a happy camper, including moving the camera too much and you guys probably have a headache already. Bearing. Gently. Oiling our bearing and spin it around a little bit just so the oil is all over that bearing inside. And we're going to close this one. Drive cup. Set screw out. Make sure no oil, because you're dealing with oil and Loctite, no oil is hitting those little set screws or the shaft. Very important. Red Loctite. Find your flat spot. Nicely done. And close it on the flat spot. Tighten it very tight. And wipe the excess Loctite because God forbid you don't want any Loctite in your bearings. Now that everything is clean, we're going to verify again that everything sits flat. Same exact distance with that shaft inside that drive cup. So that's beautiful. Bearings are oiled, that looks beautiful, I like that. On both sides, of course, everything here is Loctited, all the set screws are Loctited, these set screws are Loctited, and we know that everything is even. Now we're actually ready to put our locker inside our diff housing. A little nice cleanup here, we still have just a little bit of excess oil and Loctite here and there, but that's pretty much it. This locker is ready to go into the car. You can actually hear that it's hitting. Okay, that looks good enough. You see, the reason we removed all the bearings from here is because we didn't want all those catastrophic metal shavings getting into the bearing and destroying both of them. So I'm gonna clean it up and show you the finished product. Okay, so we cleaned everything up and this is about how that looks. And now you can actually see that when this sits here, and you guys, by the way, might ask yourself why I even have to do it, is because the GP5 ring gears were designed and put into production with infractions or uh, felonies or whatnot after the hot racing metal casing was, uh, or aluminum, sorry, was developed. So <laughs> a little bit uh, finicky, but it is what it is. But now, after we did that, it's not hitting and life is good. Okay, stop Roz, stop, they don't care. Okay. All right, now before we actually put the locker back in there with the actual shafts and everything, we wanna make sure that our mesh is correct. This is very important. So we put that thing in there and we kind of gauge our mesh and we see how much we can actually move our locker. So that's way, way too much. But is it way too much to the right or way too much to the left? So we're going to grab 
our housing, move it here, and then let me shed some light here. And then we wanna make sure that our mesh is proper. Also, we wanna make sure that if this is pushed towards each other, that it's not too much, and it is. So we know that we need to put some spacers here also, because I wanna make sure that that, that never happens. If we have a little bit too much stress on this side, we wanna make sure that this ring gear is not being pushed too much towards our pinion, because then it's just gonna to be too much, too hard, too tight. So we're gonna put a little bit here and a little bit here, probably like three of them here, one here or two here, one here. We'll see in a minute. Let's get this out. Now, Arma are very good lately at realizing that you need to shim your differentials or lockers, so they've been providing some of them. But if you can't buy these from Arma, you can buy these from Tecno. I'm gonna put three of them on the right side just to make sure that the ring gear cannot be pushed too much towards the pinion. I'm gonna put three on the right side, one on the left side. I think it's gonna be a little bit too tight, but let's see. It's a little bit too tight. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, just a little bit too tight. So we're gonna get rid of the one from the left and we're gonna keep only three shims on the right side. It seems all right. There is a slight movement, but not too much. And then let's look at our mesh. Mesh is perfect, not too tight, not too loose. So I actually like that. I'm gonna try and force now the ring gear towards the gears. And I still can, which means that if I am, if the locker will allow me to force it into the pinion, I need more shims here. So now I'm forcing it into the pinion, which pretty much means forcing the ring gear into this pinion here, just to see what will happen to the mesh. And it's somewhat aggressive. I think I can live with that, to be honest with you. I think that's good enough. I think three shims on the right is what I wanted to have. So now we can actually, unfortunately, remove it. We can actually have our CVDs installed and gently position our locker inside. So kind of tricky, but very doable. Eventually you guys will get used to it. You see one of those shims actually pop out again. I sometimes hold it in a little bit of an angle and I make sure that those shims actually sit flat. And this angle, oh, sorry about that guys. Let me zoom you out a little bit. I can't, okay, so I'll do it like so. So I do it in a little bit in an angle and then just like so. So now everything sits inside and there is not too much resistance. And it was just three shims on the right and I make sure there are inside their grooves exactly. So that looks good, my mesh is good, everything is exactly like I want it to be and I keep it there and now we can actually close it. Closing it, of course, uh, pretty straightforward. You just close it. Uh, what you wanna make sure though, that it doesn't apply too much pressure. You wanna make sure that the machining is proper and we have no resistance whatsoever. Keep in mind that you cannot use your stock screws for here. So Hot Racing is actually providing you guys with those screws. After you do, you wanna make sure that your resistance is still like it were before those screws. And it's not, that is a lot stronger now. So what you wanna do is put a little bit of Loctite on these screws. I'm not gonna do it on camera because it's a very, very boring part and just open them slightly. If you want, you can use Loctite. If you don't want, you don't have to, but uh, sometimes I just open them just a little bit, just so I don't have too much resistance. And that seems like it did the trick, I'm happy with it. Let me see the level of, yeah. The reason you put Loctite is because the screws are actually not closed all the way. So you want it to kind of keep its location, but uh, pretty happy about that. I'll leave with that. Okay, front shocks. Okay, when it comes to front shocks, pretty straightforward. What I do is just take the uh, front shocks and I put the rear springs. So uh, I buy extra rear springs. The Limitless or Infraction, 
Uh, rear springs are a lot stronger, longer, and a bit thicker. And that's what you want in the front because at once 50, 60, 70, when you stop or when you have an ex excess of downforce from depend what body you're using, you need that front shock to be a little bit more sturdy, a little bit stiffer. So uh, rear here and the installation is relatively simple. Um, you just put that pin here, just like so. And you bring that here. I like to keep that breather on top, but it really doesn't matter. You put that plastic parts, and then let me just spin you around so you can see better. And then you just put it in there. Uh, pretty much super straightforward install. Now these little screws right here, you just, once this pin is in, you just put them inside the A-arm. So it locks this pin, sorry about that guys. So it locks this pin from coming out. And here you just put that nut this nut, you put this nut here and you just close it and you're pretty much done to be honest. Uh, front shocks, nope. Front shocks are super straightforward and simple. And now that these are fully done and built, we can start actually installing them on the chassis and start adding all the motors, ESCs, battering, electronics, and everything. But this video is honestly long enough. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you feel like following this build, do so. See you guys.